Good morning, Honors Anatomy and Physiology. I am here with you guys today to review uh, with you for your test that is tomorrow, Tuesday, April 28th. Uh, I'll go through the parts of the study guide we haven't yet finished and uh, review most of those other structures for you. I won't go necessarily in order of the packet, bouncing around a little bit, but hopefully by the end of this, almost everything will be filled out. Okay, so we have identified and learned the names of all of the organs of the digestive tract. There will be a picture similar to this on the test, one that's gonna be something from a previous homework assignment. So make sure you um, are familiar with those structures and are able to review them. But a part of your packet that we haven't yet filled out, which would be great to review, is on page nine, going through all of the different organs of our um, digestive tract. So when we talk about the GI tract, that's another name for the alimentary canal, and that is essentially the tube in which food flows through. Um, it is important that um, you know that those, all of these on the left-hand side of the screen, those are going to be organs that are hollow and that food is going to pass through. Those things that are accessory structures doesn't mean they're not important. In fact, the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas are all very important, but they have a, um, food doesn't pass through them, but they have a important function in the digestive tract itself. So uh, let's go through as you eat food passing down. We start off with food ingestion in the mouth. Um, we use our teeth and our tongue to um, help with that process. Your salivary glands have a very important role of making salivary amylase. Um, it moistens food as it goes through. It helps produce that bolus of food. Um, it also ends up kind of protecting the inside of your mouth from drying out, things like that. Um, and it will start digesting sugars and starches in your mouth. As you swallow, you push food to the back of your pharynx using your tongue and it passes then into your esophagus. Please remember your esophagus has no digestive function. It's just a tube that connects essentially your mouth to your stomach. Once food reaches your stomach, a whole bunch of different new chemical reactions are gonna start occurring, um, and those begin in the stomach, continue in the small intestine um, as we move through. Now, the small intestine doesn't make very many, it makes some in the brush border, but it does not make very many digestive enzymes. Instead, it relies on the secretions from the pancreas and the gallbladder um, and the liver. So your small intestine is broken down into three different sections, the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. Um, the main, 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 main function of the small intestine is to absorb nutrients. It's very long, so it has lots of time to absorb lots of structures. So here we've already taken these notes down on um, the liver, pancreas, and gallbladder, most of the functions of the liver here. One thing I want to note here, um, your liver is important for filtering blood. Don't forget that it has that hepatic portal circulation um, that allows it to do an extra check on the things that our digestive tract are absorbing to make sure that nothing's harmful that um, may be in your body. So the pancreas and liver make a whole bunch of enzymes that are gonna help metabolize different structures, um, different chemicals. And then the small intestine works to absorb all of those. Last stop on our GI tract is the large intestine, which is broken into a number of different sections. We have our cecum, um, which the appendix is attached to. And remember, the appendix doesn't have very much digestive function at all. Um, however, appendicitis is a very common illness um, that can occur. The big scary thing about appendicitis is if it ruptures, you essentially end up with feces in your whole abdominal cavity and the risk of infection and sepsis is incredibly high. But as food passes through, it's not really food at this point, it's pretty much feces, passes through these structures of our large intestine, 
large intestine is doing its final functions, which is to absorb all the excess water, it basically dries out your feces. Um, the only other things it really absorbs is vitamins and ions. Thanks to the bacteria in our large intestine, um, it aids in the production of feces. It's the bacteria that actually can break down some things that are indigestible by us as humans, like cellulose, for example, and fiber. All right, so that was a quick run through of those different organs. This was from page one of your packet. Um, it was a uh, chart that gives you the overview of what process is happening where in your body. So for example, ingestion only occurs at your mouth. I cannot ingest or eat straight into my stomach. There's no hole going straight to my stomach um, for ingestion. Um, defecation only happens at the anus um, and large intestine portion. The other processes here are sort of color coordinated and you can see what processes are happening where. So propulsion right, is this traveling down of food um, through the body. You can see this green squiggly line going the entire way um, and different things that aid in propulsion, the pushing of food. First of all, deglutition is swallowing. Peristalsis is a super important one. That is that wave-like contractions that it's like squeezing a toothpaste um, through your digestive tract. It moves food, thankfully, in one direction. A mechanical breakdown occurs when we are chewing here in our mouth using our tongue and teeth. Um, we call that mastication. Our stomach mixes and churns food as it turns and rolls and rumbles. Um, and then segmentation occurs to mix food all along the small intestine as well. And I have a picture of that on the next slide. Digestion is the chemical breakdown of molecules into smaller particles. So taking proteins and breaking them down into their smaller protein amino acids, taking a large complex carbohydrate and breaking it down into sugars, taking lipids, breaking them down into fatty acids. That's all chemical digestion. Okay. And then absorption is the whole reason why we eat in the first place is to get this food absorbed and into our body. So the main things we're absorbing is all that good stuff. Okay, We want to get our um, fats absorbed, those lipids. Oh, yeah. Interestingly enough, we'll go into some of our lymph vessels, the lacteals. Um, we also will have all of the other important nutrition factors getting absorbed. So we've got sugars, and our proteins, amino acids, fatty acids, nucleic acids getting absorbed here at the stage of absorption. Mostly the function of our small intestine. Check out here in the large intestine, the absorption that's happening is mostly water because our large intestine mostly absorbs water. All right, um, I got a little goofy on Friday. Uh, you guys have the assignment of doing your extra credit um, modeling of the digestive system. Well, I modeled the entire digestive system from mouth to anus. I will post and send this link out to you guys later today on Monday um, so you can kind of see it, but I wanted to give you the opportunity of turning in your own assignment first before um, maybe giving you any ideas. And of course, I'm getting all goofy here. Safety first with my hazmat suit. All right. This is a lot of information, I realize. Please do not feel like you need to memorize this. This was meant to help you with that one tricky assignment that what action happens at what point in your digestive tract. So, for example, your mouth does lots of things, right? Ingestion, propulsion, the mechanical breakdown and digestion because it begins digesting starches using salivary amylase at the very beginning. Your esophagus has pretty much no digestive function. It's just moving food down. Your stomach has quite a few things. Absorption in the stomach is not much, but a little. Things like alcohol and aspirin. But your small intestine, lots of functions here. Our large intestine, lots of functions here. So mostly what you should pay attention to is these colors 
and what's happening at what organ. Please do not feel like you need to memorize this. Um, that's not super duper important, but knowing the difference um, and the main organs that do each of these is important. So elimination or defecation, right? That's going to be in the anus and large intestine, ingestions in the mouth. But a lot of these other things are going to be everywhere else. <clears throat> okay, wanted to show you this real quick to review the difference between peristalsis and segmentation. Peristalsis is pushing food down using the rhythmic contractions of that muscularis layer of our digestive tract um, to push food down. Segmentation is a little unique. It's where you take one section of food and it squeezes and splits it. So this has been split and now that food has been mixed with the sections above and below. And then this gets squeezed again and mixed again. And this helps with the um, mechanical mixing of our food. This picture is not on your test, but some of these structures are. Um, a few just to quickly review with you, right? We have our oral cavity, our tongue and our teeth, important here. Um, all of the tonsils, which we talked about previously, um, are in there. But we got our teeth. One thing I want to point out is the space between your lips and your teeth is called the vestibule. And then the frenulum, your frenulum or, frenulum or your lingual frenulum is what connects the bottom of your mouth to your tongue. In some countries where rolling your R's, I can't do that or I demonstrate it for you, but rolling your R's is going to um, allow you to speak your language. The frenulum if it's attached too far forward, um, those individuals have a difficult time pronouncing and doing that action of like rolling your R's. And so occasionally doctors might cut the frenulum back to allow for better movement of the tongue and better speech patterns. There is not a picture of the tooth on the tongue, sorry, on the test, excuse me. Um, but one thing I did wanna review with you is just some of those basic structures right? Enamel is the white part that we think of when we were brushing our teeth. Um, but the dentin, that's the stuff in blue here, dentin is what allows um, for making up the bulk of our tooth. So if we think about what's your tooth made up, it's mostly made up of this thing called dentin. Um, the gingiva, that's your gum, fancy word for gum, um, the part that you can see is the crown. The root is the part that is below the surface. Not this picture, but one that is similar that we saw on a previous homework assignment will be on the test. So make sure that you are familiar with the layers. You should know the order of these layers of our GI tract and briefly what you find in each of those layers. So the mucosa layer is that inner layer. This is the lumen food would be passing down here. Um, this is probably like the small intestine we're looking at. Your serosa um, layer, or excuse me, your submucosa layer is here. We've got our lymph vessels in here, um, some of our glands, um, and lots and lots of blood vessels that are absorbing the nutrients. The next layer out is our muscularis layer that has the muscular um, contractions. This is going to be what's going to allow peristalsis to occur is that layer right there. And then the outer layer that's just this dark blue is serosa. And serosa is essentially what anchors our intestines to the walls of our abdominal cavity and to other organs and keeps everything in place. And so it's what eventually forms the mesentery. So this page from your notes goes through, we already labeled all of this, but goes through those layers in a little more detail. You do not need to know what type of tissue each of these makes up, um, but be kind of familiar with what's in each layer. So the mucosa okay, is where the mucus is produced. Okay, that's the main thing. Also know this is where your malts, mucus associated lymphatic tissues are found. Uh, excuse me. Your submucosa is the blood and the lymph vessels. 
your muscularis is the muscle layer, okay? And the serosa layer, this is the outer covering. That outer covering we call is mesentery, um, and that's where this mesothelium comes from, kind of um, similar in structure. And the other thing we've already talked about is the peritoneum. So the serosa layer is that serous layer, um, not like our uh, mucous membranes, but instead our serous membranes line closed abdominal cavities. And we have two layers that make up the serous or serosa, the visceral and the parietal peritoneum. Visceral peritoneum touches the organs themselves directly. So if it was serosa surrounding my small intestine, the visceral peritoneum would be touching my small intestine. The parietal peritoneum is what lines the abdominal cavity. So the parietal peritoneum would be what's lining my abdominal cavity. All right, so we're moving down our digestive tract. We started in the mouth, and now we're going down into our GI tract. We talked about the layers, and now into the stomach. Highlighted a few things. Um, Ruge, I don't think we wrote down before. I did mention it. You can see it faintly on this picture. These are the ridges that are in the stomach. That's what Ruge is, is these ridges, these wrinkly folds inside the stomach. Um, Want to make sure we got that definition down. Um, the sphincters of our stomach are important. The cardioesophageal sphincter has a few other names. I don't think that's on your test, but pyloric sphincter is for sure. The pyloric sphincter is what allows food to leave the stomach and go down into the small intestine, the duodenum to begin with. Um, we've already kind of talked about our functions here of our stomach. Um, one other thing I want to note is that vitamin B12 is important um, to get absorbed later on in the small intestine, but because the stomach secretes this thing called the intrinsic factor, your body is able to process vitamin B12. So you need both of these things in order to get that substances. All right, so if we zoom in on our stomach and we take a look at the gastric pits and the cells within them, there are a few important things, these three types of cells that you need to know about. All right, parietal cells. Parietal cells make hydrochloric acid. When we talk about the acids in our stomach, we're talking about that secretion from parietal cells. Hydrochloric acid is important to activate pepsinogen. Pepsinogen is being secreted by our chief cells, the ones in purple here. And those chief cells are what are um, creating pepsinogen. And pepsinogen breaks down protein. The first place protein gets broken down, digested in your body is in the stomach. Now, pepsinogen is inactive until it comes in contact with acid. When it does, it turns into pepsin. And pepsin is the active form of this protein digester. Now, I want you to think about this. There's quite a few other enzymes as well that stay inactive when they're secreted from the cells and then activate when they are released. The reason why this is, is because you don't want your own enzymes to eat away at your own cells. So if you think about these chief cells, probably have proteins in them, lots and lots of proteins, your body would not want to be secreting something and it secretes it right here and then it kills the cell that just secreted it. So instead, a lot of enzymes are secreted and they don't become activated until they actually get up and out and in the digestive tract itself. And this prevents your very, very powerful enzymes from breaking down your own cells and tissues. The other thing that actually really helps protect your stomach from these really strong digestive enzymes and acids are mucus. The mucus cell and this mucus barrier does a few things, okay? Um, first of all, the mucus is bicarbonate rich, which means that it's gonna help protect you from that stomach acid. Um, and your cells in your stomach and small intestine get replaced really quickly. And so those are important features. All right, this picture right here where you see the villi 
this picture is on your test. Not the small intestine portion, but this portion right here, okay? You will see a similar picture to that on your test. Um, it's also on your review. The important thing here, so now we are in the small intestine. We've left the stomach, we're in the small intestine. And we have lots and lots of ways in which we absorb nutrients. That is the main important function of our small intestine is to absorb nutrients. And so there's lots of features of our small intestine. First of all, it's very long and twisted, so it gives it a lot of time to absorb everything, all the good stuff. You also have these circular folds that run, um, uh, long, not longitudinally, but kind of perpendicular, perpendicular to the small intestine. And you have villi, Okay, these folds, these finger-like folds on the folds. And then if you zoom in, here's the villi. If you zoom in on the end of the villi, those villi have microvilli. So it's folds on folds on folds on a very twisted tube. This is all here to try to increase surface area. So your small intestine is all about absorption, and we want to increase surface area to allow that to happen. So this little chart from your notes went through all of those things that allow your cells to absorb nutrients um, most effectively. Now, just as a quick review, um, that microvilli, they form the brush border, and the brush border actually secretes some digestive enzymes as well. We'll get to those in a minute. Okay, moving on down. So our food has left our stomach, thank you to the pyloric sphincter, and has now just entered into the first part of our small intestine right here called the duodenum. Once food enters into the duodenum, these three very important accessory structures connect to the duodenum and empty their digestive enzymes right here. It's not important you memorize all of these ducts and um, this picture. It's not on your test. But know that they all sort of fuse together and empty into the duodenum. So let's go through some of the functions of these guys. But before I do, one thing I do want to mention is the circulatory system of our digestive tract and in particular the liver. So if you remember our liver, this is not a picture in your study guide. Our liver has this extra little um, step before blood goes back to the heart in the main circulation. But everything that your intestines are absorbing, there is what we call the hepatic portal vein or hepatic portal circulation. And through this process, the liver does an extra step of checking things out to make sure that they are good and clean and healthy. All right, this is one of the final pictures we haven't yet labeled on page six. Now, if you printed a color picture from um, the materials I've posted on Google Classroom, yours looks a little bit different than this picture here. I took it from the textbook. Um, so you might wanna be adding, do you see these blue brackets and lines? You may want to add those things to your picture. The other thing, if you like to color coordinate, the thing you might do is notice the red and yellow dots. Give yourself a little key here and you can kind of, as we go through randomly, kind of color red and yellow. And for example, like the red is only here in the gallbladder, um, but we have red and yellow coming into other things. So the red is representing the hormone CCK, which has important roles in stimulating these accessory organs. And the yellow is secretin, which also is a hormone that's gonna stimulate a lot of these important secretions. So I'm gonna go through a number, essentially the steps that happen as food leaves my stomach through the pyloric sphincter, what happens? So the first thing that occurs, and this little line right here, I crossed off because it's not actually happening here. Instead, I added a line because step number one technically happens when food enters the stomach. So I'm gonna give you a stimulus and then what gets secreted. So when food hits the stomach, we release our stomach enzymes. 
those things like pepsin. And if we were talking about a baby infant, renin. These are going to start breaking down proteins. The hormone hi, that also gets released when food hits the stomach is gastrin. And gastrin is the hormone that's going to tell the stomach to activate its digestive enzymes. That's step number one. Step number two occurs when food leaves the stomach and enters into the duodenum. So that's the stimulus for step number two. What happens is these enteroendocrine cells are going to release its hormones. And the two hormones, they're color-coded here, is secretin and CCK. That is step two. The third hormone that gets um, secreted is GIP gastric inhibitory uh, peptide. And that basically tells the stomach to stop producing so much acid and pepsin because once it's left the stomach, it's gonna be finishing up its role. All right, so here's step two. Step three, we've got our CCK and secretin in the bloodstream. It's gonna get absorbed into the pancreas here and that's gonna be our step three, the pancreas secretions. Pancreas is gonna secrete all of its digestive juices and digestive enzymes and there's a long list. We've talked about those before. Here's that list. You don't need to feel like you have to like write everything down, but you should be able to pick out like which of the following is not a pancreatic enzyme um, from a list. The other thing that's not digesting food is the other secretion called bicarbonate. And bicarbonate is a buffer that's going to neutralize the stomach acid because we've got hydrochloric acid leaking out here and we don't want that to harm our small intestine. So bicarbonate's gonna buffer those acid secretions. All right, step number four happens when we get our CCK and secretin in our bloodstream. By the way, that's the square is representing the bloodstream. It comes to our liver. When the secretin gets to the liver, it's gonna tell our liver to produce bile. Bile is really important to emulsify lipids, right? breaking down fats. That's the main function of our liver is to, digestive function is to break down fats. Now, the other thing simultaneously that's happening is that secretin stimulates the liver, CCK stimulates the gallbladder. So the gallbladder is going to be stimulated to release its bile down the bile duct into the duodenum, and this is going to um, help with the emulsification of our lipids, right? Because these do the same thing. Liver produces it, gallbladder stores it, and will release it when stimulated. And then the last one isn't pictured on here, but as food continues down my small intestine and reaches the brush border, um, then there are three other different chemicals that get released right at the cell membrane of our cells. So our disaccharidases, the nucleases, and aminopeptidases. Lots of terms here I know, okay? Um, what is important, okay, you should be able to know which enzymes are associated which, with which organ and what they break down, okay? Um, so pancreatic juices does break down of almost everything, okay? We'll go through these here in a minute. Um, protein digestion is in the stomach, and then the liver and gallbladder digest fats, okay? And you'll get review with that on your review assignment today. Okay, this was a day of notes. We wrote down lots of stuff. The color coding is important here. So here's sort of your key. This whole process of digestion is all about taking large macromolecules and breaking them down into their subunits, our small monomers, so that we can then put those into our own body and build things. It is not important that you remember every detail, excuse me, it doesn't, um, every detail, but it is important that you know which ones are essentially sugars, carbs, proteins, lipids, and um, nucleic acids. So um, the best way is to kind of 
try to find root words that can help you remember that. So we talked before about anything that ends in an ACE is an enzyme. Um, we've got lots of ACEs on here. Um, amylase is a sugar digester, a starch digester. Salivary amylase, that's why you can suck on the sucker and it will disintegrate in your mouth um, is because it breaks down sugars, starches. Same with pancreatic amylase, it's going to break down starches as well, um, but in from the pancreas instead of in the mouth. The um, brush border also secretes um, these enzymes that are going to break down my two sugars into single sugars. That's why they're called disaccharidases because they're breaking down these double sugars like lactase, maltase, and sucrase. These are two ring carbs that are going to be broken down into single ring carbs. So breaking sucrose into fructose and glucose um, is the role here. If somebody doesn't make this enzyme lactase, they are considered lactose intolerant because they can't break down that disaccharide lactose. So anything that ends in that, um, these are our sugar ones. Now, nucleases, okay, these are going to break down our nucleic acids. Um, it's the same one down here um, from the pancreas. Um, lipase, like lipid fats, they break down fats. Um, bile does not break down fats. It um, emulsifies them. It basically turns them into smaller pieces. Lipase is the only thing that actually will break down the fats. And so it's important that they get broken up into smaller pieces so that the lipase can attack those fat molecules. Um, and then we get to this crazy list of all the proteins. Okay. Not all of them, but most of them might have the word PEP in there, like pepsin, pepsinogen, um, PEP as in peptide, breaking down peptide bonds in our proteins, amino peptidase, and even has the word amino, like as an amino acid in there. Chymotrypsin and trypsin um, are both protein digesters, um, and then elastase as well. Okay. So just knowing which ones are proteins, which ones are carbs, which ones are lipids and nucleic acid. That's the important part here. So the other thing that controls those enzymes being released are digestive hormones. And we have four main hormones we've talked about, gastrin, secretin, CCK, and GIP. Now, in addition to hormones, this is new, okay? In addition to hormones, the other thing that controls my digestive system is the parasympathetic nervous system. That is the rest and digest part of our nervous system, right? Um, as opposed to sympathetic fight or flight. So part of your brain controls your digestive system, but also these hormones. So gastrin is in the stomach. It gets released by those enteroendocrine cells and it tells your stomach to produce all of its secretions. Acid, okay, HCL, mucus, which is produced from those neck cells and goblet cells. Now the goblet cells make mucus, I believe that's on your test. And that pepsinogen is produced from the chief cells. Acid is produced by the parietal cells. You do need to know what cell type secretes what in the stomach here. Secretin, we already went through kind of our liver picture. Um, it's going to stimulate the pancreas and the liver. CCK is going to stimulate the pancreas and the gallbladder. And GIP is going to tell the stomach to slow down its secretions. Okay, this chart here. I'm going to give you guys the answers to this. Please don't feel like you need to memorize it. The important part here are the colors. So I want you to be able to see this enzyme here and be able to tell me what it's going to be, a carb, lipid, protein, or nucleic acid. So amylase, this one's going to be pink, it's carbohydrate, okay? You should know it's secreted by the salivary glands in the mouth. Um, it's not important you have these memorized, but do know it's pink because it's a carb. Pepsin. That's a protein, pep, peptide, protein. It should be purple. This one is in the stomach, right? It's important to know it's in the stomach. 
You don't have to necessarily memorize the substrate and product. Substrate just means what it starts as. Product is what it turns into once it breaks it down. Tripepsin is another protein. This one is secreted by the pancreas and the duodenum. Pancreatic amylase, just like this amylase, is going to be pink. It is another sugar breaker downer. But instead of in the mouth, this is in the duodenum from the pancreas. Lipase, think lipids. This one is going to break down your lipids into its smaller subunit fatty acids. Again, the pancreas and duodenum. Maltase is from the brush border. It's one of the brush border enzymes, one of the disaccharide aces. Um, and it's going to just maltase is in maltose. It breaks down sugars. This is a sugar breaker downer. Carboxypeptidase is a protein pep peptide. Right? That's in the pancreas and duodenum. And the amino peptidase is another protein that has that word pep in there. So if you were to give this list, given this list again, I want you to be able to look and say like, okay, what's a protein digester? Pepsin, tripepsin, not that, not that, not that, but these last two are. Okay, what are the carb digesters? Amylases, those two. Maltase as well. Okay, what's our lipid digester? Lip base. Okay. Which one is our nucleic acid digester? We don't have one of them on the list here, but those are the nucleases. Um, it's not important you have that memorized for the test though. Okay. Um, I don't always go over the um, crossword with you. Um, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I did want to give you a few of the terms that we did not cover in class. They will not be on the test, but if you wanted to practice and review, I highly encourage you to do the crossword puzzle. Um, so I'm giving you some starter ones, ones that I didn't think you would know the answers to. I'm not even going to bother going over them, but there is one that there is a term I want to go over, and that's one down catabolism, catabolism. And it's defined as the process in which living cells break down substances into smaller substances. This is a chemistry word. When I take a protein and break it down into amino acids, that's catabolism, not cannibalism, but catabolism. Um, breaking a starch down into its small monosaccharides, that's catabolism. Um, and that is a term you're gonna see on your review. All right, trying to go through as fast as possible. It's a lot of material I know. There is not going to be anything on the mitochondria and cellular respiration. So you can cross this picture off. It's on the bottom of page six. You can also go to the very last page, um, page 12 in the packet, and cross off the cellular respiration picture. I'm not going to go into those details for your test. I hope that you found this helpful knowing what's important to know, um, et cetera, as you go through it, what pictures you're going to see on the test. Be certain you do your review assignment. Your test tomorrow will be emailed to your school email. You will have one hour, 60 minutes to complete it. It will be timed, um, and so it's important that you go through that process correctly. I'll give a little tutorial video um, as I go over the concept map tomorrow. Happy studying. Good luck. Bye guys.